and Bria, and, uh, to Terry and I, and Richard, and uh, it, uh, yeah. Maureen. <laughs> I, I was afraid I was going to forget Richard's name for some reason. He's rewinding us. But uh, thank you all for coming. Um, how many people are here are from out of town, first time in Minnesota? that went out to 22 different states, and there are 14 here. Thank you all for coming. Uh, thank you, Richard and Maureen. Last uh, night we had a nice uh, group's dinner out at Bucas, and had a good time. Got to meet some of their family and, and good people, so we feel real comfortable about that. We feel, feel real comfortable about your son. <laughs> Anymore, but uh, we should be proud of him as a son because I, I'm, I'm also proud of him as a son-in-law now. So um, I met Lee about a couple of years ago in, in Fresno, and uh, Terry had an occasion to meet him earlier, and uh, came back with good, res good responses about uh, about Lee. And uh, so a couple months later, I went out there and, and uh, met him, and we met at a restaurant and. Uh, it was really, really easy to get to know Lee because uh, he's just, uh, well, with our, our icebreaker subject is sports. And, uh, basketball, NBA basketball. He's got a PhD. I have a uh, MD, MBA, and, and Bria's got a GED. So, but, uh, in a couple of years, I have a pretty good feeling that she's going to be a master's uh, being around. Uh, it, Bria was. Um, just to be introduced to another guy was kind of a, an aberration for Bria because she was pretty tough on guys. She didn't want to get tied down with one guy through the years of you know, high school and college. And then uh, she was kind of a ball buster for guys, to be honest. I mean, uh, dating or uh, certainly a boyfriend. But uh, so here I was meeting this guy and, and I liked him right away. And uh, he's. He's just a, a good guy. And a lot of times, you know, you think you marry someone who's like you. And Lee was bit. one of the first things you can kind of tell is the physique from uh, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty close, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but we uh, both like sports. We both like kids. And absolutely adore Bria. So it was 27 years ago last month that it was my happiest day of my life. And that was the day Bria, my firstborn, was, was born. Uh, to take it anyway with my secondborn or our marriage, but up until then, it was, <laughs> it was our marriage that was the number one. But uh, just the emotion of that to, to see her born, and uh, I always wanted kids, but it was also a difficult uh, labor for Terry because Bria was 9 pounds, 10 ounces, big girl, and my brother Dennis in fact said it was another 6 ounces, he would have had it mounted. So. <laughs> but we didn't do that, we didn't do that, I mean as a kid she followed me around everywhere. She was a daddy's little girl and I thrived it, I just loved it, and today she's more of a mama's girl, I guess, if you will, because I cannot talk on the phone for an hour and 45 minutes straight. Um, I am proud of the fact that the Bria is um, going to be a mom. And Katie, can you stand up right now, Katie? So, Katie is five years old. I didn't see her walk up, but I understand she did a pretty good job of going up and down the aisle. So. I'm proud of the fact that I also named my daughter Bria, named our daughter Bria after my mom Lily. She's Bria, Bria Lily. And mom, would you please stand up? Three older siblings. There's Elf, uh, 
uh, Ellen and Lenore, 98, 96, 95. And uh, they change every year, I can't remember exactly. <laughs> so she's the best person I've ever met. <laughs> so I would be remiss if I didn't mention last month, uh, Terry and I celebrated our 35th wedding anniversary. <laughs> so I think it's getting pretty serious, right there? <laughs> yeah. I didn't get the number right. Yeah. But she is uh, truly my best friend. Uh, sorry, John. Sorry, Rex. Sorry, Jeff. Sorry, uh, Dick. Yeah, sorry, everybody else. But she is. Uh, it, there's so much planning involved with this one. I mean, the two girls, Priya and Terry especially, were just going back and forth. And I kind of stayed away. And I think we stayed away as well. Smart. Um, I, well, all I had to do when, for our marriage was pick out the band or the orchestra, as my dad said. And uh, we had to pick out a song. So I picked out Art Garfunkel's um, song, I Only Have Eyes For You. And then she picked out a Rolling Stones song that was, You Can't Always Get Your Own. <laughs> oh, well. married me anyway. But, uh, so here we are, Lee and Bria, Bria and Lee, whatever you say first, it really doesn't matter, you're a team, right? You're all about, you know, compromise, and I'm not going to give a lesson here, but uh, it, that's what it is. Everybody, I mean, you do, you, everybody's got a vote in things, and I don't understand why this is, and all the guys can probably agree with me, that even though you have a single vote, an equal vote, it's always the women that gets the tiebreak. Yeah! Right? I'm hearing a lot of little hands clap right now. <laughs> so what, we're all here for a reason, and that reason was uh, what happened a couple of years ago in the supermarket. And I think it's kind of ironic that it was a supermarket that they, that they met because Richard and Marine both grew up on a farm, and they did as well, you know, bringing props to that supermarket, that grocery store. Drove Tuck for Rel uh, for 38 years to bring product to the grocery stores. Terry and I worked in the grocery store. Terry was a farmer's daughter. She worked for Piggly Wiggly. I worked for Red Owl and uh, Real Life grocery stores. But there it is. <laughs> so there's a little karma there. So they were waiting in line. Uh, Bria had noticed Lee before walking in and, you know, I uh, didn't think too much about him. He was tall and a good looking guy. but. So they're in line, and the whole group is kind of talking because it's kind of a line, long queue. And, and uh, Lee kind of noticed her and tried to make a little small talk. And it was nice, but you know, he could have been cool and looked down at his cell phone and checked ESPN or an email. And Brina could have done the same, uh, looking at Facebook or a text. And, but we learned something from Lee, and I think we all need to you know, take this to heart, because there was something to be liked in, in Bria. So, a little bit more small talk, and he's trying to get her attention, and, you know, she's being polite, but she's kind of a ball buster for guys. <laughs> so, you, get, you know, you got two to four minutes, and next thing you know, after the line's done, Bria's going that way, Lee's going that way, and he says, how would you like to go out for a real lunch sometime? She says yes, and here we are today. <laughs> so, that's kind of what we got to do. You know, step out of our shell and, and uh, speak up. Speak up in your marriage, speak up in life. And, uh, you know, you see an old woman walking down the street, you know, just tell her how beautiful she is. You know, it's, it's one of those things that they probably haven't heard that in a long, long time, but it's, they probably deserve it more. You know, you see someone that's a, a woman that's, a, that's uh, nine months pregnant, eight months pregnant, and she's not feeling particularly lovely, but tell her how beautiful she is. So step out of your shell. So that's the thing I think we learned from, from Lee, and we can all take to heart. It's my beard. Thank you, I need that. So. Rather than cheers, I kind, of, I kind of like the word salute. So if you could, uh, uh,
not. <laughs> <laughs> See, I missed the photo <laughs> 